Stretching from the friendly northern border of Canada, the Mississippi River travels all the way to the north and empties into the Gulf of Mexico. In its 2,340 mile long journey, the Mississippi River passes through 10 different states. On top of that, this powerful river supports a whopping $13 billion shipping industry, providing 35,000 related jobs. Despite this, the southern half of this magnificent river does not host any major American cities. But why is such an important trade route so deserted? Before we dive into that, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe as it helps us make more videos like this. The Mississippi River goes through 10 American states, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, Illinois, Missouri, Kentucky, Tennessee, Arkansas, Louisiana, and of course, Mississippi. Native Americans lived along the banks of this river for thousands of years, relying on it for sustenance and transportation. Similarly, early Europeans used the Mississippi to explore the interior and the northern reaches of what was to become the United States. In the 18th century, this river was designated as the border of the new United States. With the country's westward expansion at the time, it became a convenient boundary line between the western and eastern halves of the nation. But it's not just the length of this river that's astounding. The total volume of water it carries is one of the most defining features of the Mississippi River. On average, about 6,000 cubic feet of water flows through the lower Mississippi every second. This, of course, changes according to the season, but the Mississippi River is the 13th largest river in the world by average volume, ranking behind only the behemoths like the Amazon, Ganges, and Congo rivers. Passing through multiple American states is quite a resume in the river arena, but this wouldn't be possible without several major rivers that blend in with the Mississippi River along the way. One of the most important tributaries to expand its reach and impact is the Missouri River. This river merges with the Mississippi waters near the beautiful city of St. Louis in Missouri. This is important because the Missouri River single-handedly enables the Mississippi River to reach the Great Plains, which covers states like Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Nebraska. Similarly, originating in the Texas Panhandle, the Red River joins the Mississippi River after traveling a long journey through Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Louisiana. Personally, I like the Ohio River more because of its usability. This river serves as a natural boundary for Pennsylvania, Ohio, West Virginia, Kentucky, Indiana, and Illinois, before finally joining the Mississippi River at Cairo in Illinois. But these tributaries are just the big names. Several thousand smaller rivers also join forces with the Mississippi River. Due to this reason, the Mississippi River's watershed is unparalleled. It covers around 1.2 million square miles and goes through 31 states in America. But since we're on the subject, the history behind the Mississippi River is also equally unparalleled. In the early half of the 17th century, French explorers, including René Robert Cavalier and Sieur de La Salle, explored the Mississippi River basin and claimed the region for France. They soon established a significant presence along the Mississippi River and its tributaries, including the Ohio and the Missouri Rivers. Eventually, the area became part of the vast territory known as New France. The Mississippi River was a vital trade route for fur traders, as the fur business was becoming a lucrative business for the French elites. These settlers established many agricultural communities along the river, prompting the region to become an important source of food and resources for the ever-growing French colonies at that time. However, half a century later, the French met with their rivals, Spain and Britain, to claim control over those territories. Eventually, after various conflicts and treaties, the Mississippi River became a border between French, Spanish, and British territories. From 1763 to 1800, the western bank of the Mississippi River, along with present-day New Orleans, was under Spanish control. During this period, this territory saw drastic growth in economic development and cultural exchange. Then, in 1803, the United States acquired the vast Louisiana Territory from France for $15 million. This was a critical event in American expansion, as it opened up vast territories for settlement and economic development. In the modern era, the Mississippi River plays a crucial role in the economic, environmental, and cultural fabric of the United States. It is significant in the American transportation and commerce industry, serving as a vital waterway for the movement of agricultural and energy resources. On top of that, the river's fertile basin also plays a vital role in agriculture, supporting the cultivation of crops like corn and soybeans. 
Additionally, the Mississippi River serves as a fundamental water supply for numerous communities along its course, ensuring the sustainability of ecosystems, wildlife habitats, and industries. However, all these developments come with a price, the hefty price of pollution and habitat destruction. Furthermore, the impacts of climate change have shifted the river patterns, causing massive floods to be a fairly common occurrence. Despite all this wonderful river has to offer, these challenges make it difficult for people to live along the Mississippi River, especially the southern half. If we look at other major rivers, oftentimes we find major population centers around them, whereas the case is totally flipped with the Mississippi River. Very few cities are around it, and they are far smaller in size and population density. What's more interesting is that the northern half is way more populated than the southern half. We can see major cities like St. Louis, Davenport, and Minneapolis in the north, whereas in the south, there are only a few notable names. Even at the intersection of the Ohio and Mississippi rivers, the cities are not that affluent. Despite the strategic location for trade and travel, very little seems to be going on in terms of economic activities. Only a small town of Cairo, Illinois sits at this meeting point. The river's natural behavior and its surrounding geography can be attributed to this anomaly. On top of that, floods are a fairly common occurrence in this area. Due to the unpredictable nature of the river current, establishing an urban city around it is normally out of the equation. We humans generally learn from history, even though modern pop culture likes to deny that. The Great Mississippi Flood of 1927 was one of the most brutal floods in U.S. history. It submerged more than 25,000 square miles of land under 30 feet of water for several months. This has to be the major reason why a bustling city is not found around the southern half of the Mississippi River. One of the notable regions in the southern stretch, the Yazoo Mississippi Delta, is formed by sediment deposits by the river throughout the years. There's no doubt that the delta is a fertile land for agriculture. However, establishing a large city on top of this mushy land is extremely risky because the delta's soil composition and flat topography are, in plain words, a recipe for a huge flooding disaster. In contrast, the northern half of the Mississippi River, particularly around St. Louis and Minneapolis, experiences significantly better conditions. For instance, they're situated at a higher elevation, minimizing the risks of flood. They have more stable soils and rivers are easier to manage and control. On the other hand, historical developments also play a role in this stark difference. During the Great European Settlement, the northern part of the Mississippi River was way more accessible than the south. This enabled a functional society to thrive there, way ahead of its southern counterpart. As of 2022, the southern region of the Mississippi River accommodates approximately 3.7 million residents. Predominantly living in Memphis, Tennessee, the population sits at around 1.3 million inhabitants. New Orleans follows Memphis with roughly 1.2 million and Baton Rouge with approximately 870,000 residents. Beyond these three cities, there's not much going on in this part of the river. On the flip side, the northern half of the Mississippi River is home to more than 7 million people, with Minneapolis as the most populous area, hosting about 3.7 million individuals, and St. Louis with a population of 2.8 million. Also, according to some research, St. Louis and Minneapolis have far better urban development than the south because the Mississippi River is comparatively easier to control on the northern side. This magnificent river, coupled with tons of historical, economic, and political aspects ingrained in its name, is one of the most important and interesting geographic plots in the United States. Despite being the most powerful country in the world, establishing a city in nature's hotspot is quite impossible. And let's not underestimate the fact that establishing an urban city is quite a challenge in itself, even when there is no risk of floods involved. But having said that, the geographic marvel of the Mississippi River will pose a challenge to the Southerners for a long time.